Um, this is Saturday, January 25th, 2020, and Robin Westenra and I, Margot, are here today and we're discussing the coronavirus and some other things and implications and I have a theory about why this is happening in China and stuff so you know we're just knocking around some ideas so hi Robin thanks for being hi, here hi it's nice to talk to you again <laughs> I know it's it's been too while. long we need to talk more often because yeah that's it, kind of kind of what keeps me going is to having pe people of like mind to talk to and you know empathetic and like you were saying and you know just to have yeah, well, someone you. someone on the same page when we're working through yeah. all of this so um i've been following uh, i've been following your blog and i just finished reading the latest and i've been listening to the hal turner stuff and reading all of that and it's really scary um i was in a conference call this morning and um <clears throat> it was on mel friedman Mel Friedman's website, you know, Mel Friedman, How I Cured More Gallons. He does a Saturday morning conference call where people can call in and talk about things. And he had Robert Scott Bell on as a guest today. Do you know who that is? Have you heard of him? No, no, I haven't. Okay, he's pretty well known here in the United States among natural practitioners, and he's got a radio show and this and that, and he's... Uh, trained home in home he used to practice homeopathic treating people and stuff but um he he's saying that that people with the compromised immune system they're the ones that are going down and that that whenever virus is in the title that that's that's a cover that's a cover story for what's really going on. Mm. And um, he doesn't think, he thinks it's a scam, frankly. Um, I don't think it's a scam, but he was saying, you know, if we build our immune systems, it's sp specifically with selenium and chromium, but mainly selenium, then when we come into contact with um, a coronavirus, which he calls a cold virus, but you know, I can't see how it's just a cold virus killing all these people. But he says when we come into contact with that, our immune systems will kick in. But there are a lot of us with compromised immune systems. And, um, you know, it's it's really scary to me. And I'm kind of flipping out. But um, yeah, I think that. Um, there's a lot of political stuff behind it, and I think there's a reason that they're hitting China heavy, heavy, heavy. But, um, you know, every year, th when it, before they really get the, figure out what flu strain is going around, they wait and see what's coming out of China, because it always starts there. Yes. It always starts in China. And Robert was saying that China is the most polluted country in the world, which we know. And he was saying that there are so many toxins and stuff that, you know, it's and people don't live healthy. There are 11 million people all piled up on top of each other. And so it's, um, it's an unhealthy situation all the way around. And it when plus they uh, eat uh, they eat bats and snakes and yeah dogs and, and live rats and oh yeah. my god all kinds of things so um, I don't know but I want to I want to share with you have you heard of Deagle dot com Deagle D E A G E L dot com uh, for only very vaguely I don't really know it all right I'm gonna pull it up. And this is my theory. I was looking at it in the last couple of days. I've looked at it before. Okay. Um, oh, I've got to share. I'm going to do a screen share. Yeah, yeah. And share. Okay, do you see that? Yeah, yeah, I've got it. 
Okay, well here's here's the entry page for Deagle.com and it says combat aircraft and it has all the latest on all the aircraft out in the world and all this stuff. But if you scroll down, this is the home page and you go to other info and there's a link down here that says countries and if you click on that then you get this amazing database and this is data from 2017 now this was when it was last updated and these are projection and then this is here's all the data and you can you can put them in order is they have 209 countries listed you can put them in order by country population gdp military expense or ppp which is power purchase parity all of this is in u.s dollars and um so this is by ppp when you look at no way no this is by gdp gdp united states is top and yep. then china's second japan is third germany is fourth france is fifth uk is sixth and so on russia is down here 12th yeah yeah i know and um then you can click on the link for each country this is there's amazing data here and they have the world figures these are the world figures for 2017 with population 7.4 billion here's the square kilometers uh, 55 inhabitants per square kilometer on and on and on and then here's the country data with population density all this stuff all right yeah. military budget and um shows on the map where the country is so we go back but um here's what's trippy <laughs> here here's what's trippy and i've known about this website for a long time and i have looked at it before but i didn't i was kind of like in the back of my mind and then yesterday i was i was trying to remember and I'm, it came to me yes deagle so i came back to it and um, if you hit view year 2025 forecast, things look a lot different. And first of all, there's 183 countries listed instead of 200 and whatever there were. So that means that many countries are going away, first of all, yeah. by 2025. And then it's still... <laughs> China's on on top, but and 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 the red, the red, the red, the arrow going down means um, decrease in population, and a green arrow going up means an increase yeah. in population or GDP or whatever, right? So China's yeah. first. They but they had a decrease in population from one billion three hundred and eighty million. To one billion three hundred and fifty-eight million four hundred and forty thousand, so they had a, a decrease, but they're they're on top. Right under yeah. them is India, then Russia, then Japan, then Brazil, and then the U.S. The U.S. is yeah. sixth, at, with a population going down. Okay, in 2017, the population was 326,620,000, but they predict it going down to 99,553,100, which is ah. a huge decrease. And then, of course, the GDP is down, the military expense is down. Oh God, look at the GDP. And that's something. <laughs> and no yes. one no one really knows you know what what this is forecast from but he has these notes and i want to read this to everybody and i'm going to get a can, clean... I, 
Can I just uh, interject for a moment? Because I've, yes, I've, yeah. I've just suddenly remembered wh where I know this from, and it was from uh, Max Egan was talking about the Australian right. fires, and he and he referred to this. Oh, really? And, okay. Uh, and he was looking at for Australia, and it showed. I can't remember the dates or anything, but it it was projecting a decrease in population in Australia. And he yeah. was talking about that. In well, we can to we fires. can line them up by country, and Australia should be close to the top here. Yeah, um, just at one down one. Here's Australia. Yeah, it's yeah. down to. Um, yeah, yeah. From twenty-three million and something to fifteen million and something. Wow. And. Wow, look at that decrease in uh, GDP. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't that something? This is, an, an, this is an interesting website. And I want to, this pink stuff that you can't read, I'm going to put it in clean view. And I want to read it to you here. And then we can talk about it. Because he talks about where all this data comes from. And supposedly this guy, Deagle, um, used to work I think for the CIA or something and anyway they put all this together so um, list of countries forecast 2025 and he says there have been many questions about the country's forecast especially the one focusing on the United States of America or USA they won't be answered one by one but below you can find some explanation thoughts and reflections we're going to keep this as short as possible. The majority of the economic and demographic data used in the making of the forecast is widely available by institutions such as the CIA, IMF, UN, USG, etc. So basically all of the alphabet agencies and agencies around the world. You can see the most relevant data at every single country's page. There's a tiny part of data coming from a variety of shadow sources, such as internet gurus, unsigned reports, and others. But all these sources are from the internet and are a public domain for at least a minority. For example, several years ago, Daigong, the Chinese ratings agency, published a report analyzing the physical economy of the states comparing it with those of China, Germany, and Japan. The conclusion was that the U.S. GDP was something between five to ten trillion dollars instead of fifteen trillion dollars as officially reported by the USG. We assume that the official data, especially economic, released by governments is fake, cooked, or distorted in some degree. Historically, it is well known that the former Soviet Union was making up fake statistics years before its collapse. Western, as well as other countries, are making up their numbers today to conceal their real estate of affairs, the real state of affairs. We are sure that many people out there can find government statistics in their own countries that by their own personal experience are hard to believe or are so optimistic that may belong to a different country. Despite the numeric data quantity, there is a quality model which has not a direct translation into numeric data. The 2014 strain of Ebola has a death rate of 50 to 60 percent. But try to imagine what would happen if there is a pandemic of Ebola with hundreds of thousands or millions infected with the virus. Now, he could have easily put the, the, the Wuhan coronavirus in there instead of Ebola. We can easily substitute this, right? Yeah. So far, the few cases of Ebola-infected people have enjoyed intensive health care with antiviral and breathing assistance, but above all, with abundant human support by physicians and nurses. In a pandemic scenario, that kind of health care won't be available for the overwhelming number of infected 
leading to a dramatic increase of the death rate due to the lack of proper health care. And that's what they're finding in China. They're not going to be able to get proper health care because everybody's getting sick, even the doctors and health care workers. The quality factor is that the death rate could increase to 80 to 90 percent in a pandemic scenario from this stated 50 to 60 percent rate. The figure itself is not important. What is relevant is the fact that the scenario can evolve beyond the initial conditions from a 50% death toll to more than 90%. By the way, no pandemic or nuclear war is included in the forecast. Mm -hmm. Right? So the forecast is just from other stuff, not from any pandemic or war. That's pretty scary. The key element to understand the process that the USA will enter in the upcoming decade is migration. And remember, he wrote this some years ago. But this is right on. Uh, we've had massive amounts of um, immigrant people migrating in. But he says people are going to be migrating out, leaving the U.S., in the past, especially in the 20th century, the key factor that allowed the USA to rise to its colossus status was immigration with the benefits of a demographic expansion supporting the credit expansion and the brain drain from the rest of the world benefiting the states. Collapse of the Western financial system will wipe out the standard of living of its population while ending Ponzi schemes such as the stock exchange and the pension funds. This is what we're going through right now. I mean, we're right on the edge of all of that right now, just coming down. The population will be hit so badly by full red bubbles and Ponzi schemes that the migration engine will start to work in reverse, accelerating itself due to ripple effects, thus leading to the demise of the states. This unseen situation for the states will develop itself in a cascade pattern with unprecedented and devastating effects for the economy. Jobs offshoring will surely end with many American corporations relocating overseas, thus becoming, for, becoming foreign corporations. We're seeing that happen already. We see a significant part of the American population migrating to Latin America and Asia, while migration to Europe, suffering a similar illness, won't be relevant. Nevertheless, the death toll will be horrible. Take into account that the Soviet Union's population was poorer than the Americans nowadays or even then. The ex-Soviets suffered during the following struggle in the 1990s with a significant death toll and the loss of national pride. Might we say twice the pride, double the fall? No. The American standard of living is one of the highest, far more than double of the Soviets while having added a services economy that will be gone along with the financial system. When the pensioners see their retirement disappear in front of their eyes and there are no servicing jobs, you can, ima you can imagine what's going to happen next. At least younger people can migrate. Never in human history were so many elders among the population. In past centuries, people were lucky to get to their 30s or 40s. The American downfall is set to be far worse than the Soviet Union's one. A confluence of crisis with a devastating result. The demographic crisis in the former Soviet Union countries has extended for over two decades, if we accept that it ended early in this decade, the 2010s. The demographic crisis will hit the world in the near future and is projected to last between three and eight decades, more or less, depending on technological breakthrough and environmental issues.
yeah if we that's if yeah. you know if we if 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 we get past this summer <laughs> if we get yeah, past this summer. year <laughs> and next if we get year the summer where we all right <laughs> right if we get past el nino and and the methane burn yeah. you know all that the aftermath is more likely a frozen picture with the population numbers staying the same for a very very long period of time the country's forecast population numbers do reflect birth and deaths, but also migratory movements. Many countries are going to increase their gross population due to immigration, while their native population may shrink. And in fact, on the chart, you see India increases, I think. Yeah. And a lot of countries in Africa increase, uh, countries in South America, a lot of them increase as well. Over the past 2,000 years, we have witnessed the Western civilization built around the Mediterranean Sea shifting to Northern Europe, and then by the mid-20th century, shifting to an Atlantic axis to finally get centered into the states in the past 30 years. The next move will see the civilization being centered in Asia with Russia and China on top. And we're already seeing that, aren't we, with the way the, oh, yeah. the militaries are lining up and, you know, Russia, yeah, yeah. it's all lining up like that. And Russia and China, it looks oh, like, yeah. are going to line up together. So they my, will be the world superpower. Yeah, yeah, theoretically. But uh, my, um, mm. my counter argument might be, I would just. Uh, show people what's on cams <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and all the permafrost <laughs> melting and and all yeah, of that yeah, yeah. okay historically a change in the economic paradigm has resulted in a death toll that is rarely highlighted by mainstream historians when the transition from rural areas to large cities happened in europe many people unable to accept the new paradigm killed themselves they killed themselves by a psychological factor. This is not mainstream, but it is true. A new crisis joins old, well-known patterns with new ones. Sorry to disappoint many of you with our forecast. It is getting worse and worse every year since the beginning of the pre-crisis in 2007. It is already said that this website is nonprofit, built on spare time, and we provide our information and services as is, without further explanations and or guarantees. We are not linked to any government in any way, shape, or form. We are not a death or satanic cult or arms dealers, as some BS is floating around the internet on this topic. Take into account that the forecast is nothing more than a model, whether flawed or correct. It's not God's word or a magic device that allows to foresee the future. And this is dated wow. Sunday, October 26, 2014. Had you heard all of that before? Uh, well, I mean, the arguments are not sort of unfamiliar. I mean, the specifics of what he's got up there uh, is probably... It's probably very new. Um, I don't, but but here's my theory. Getting back to my theory. Yes. Let's go back to GDP. Okay, we see, <clears throat> we see that by the, in the 2025 forecast, they've got China on top, India second, and they increased in population. Russia is third. They decreased in population, but their other stuff all went up. And Japan is fourth. Fifth is Brazil, and they increased in population. I'm thinking a lot of the people from the U.S. or North America probably migrated down there. And then the U.S. is sixth. But he doesn't take into account, you know, abrupt climate change and all of that stuff. But what if the powers that be, you know, they were looking at this and they said, you know, according to this, you know, China's in Russia, they're going to be like this superpower coming together and 
and you know the US is basically going to be like a third world country compared to what they're used to even though their GDP is still sixth in the world that's still really good compared to the rest of the yeah, world yeah. but it's it's horrible compared to what we're used to I mean it's horrible you know and the the uh, military expenditures down to thirty two thousand dollars a year rather than six hundred and seventy thousand and I mean that's that's probably more than that but anyway um and the um power purchase parity you know i mean it's horrible compared to where we're at but we're still better than indonesia and mexico and italy and france and all these other countries but we're still higher than canada so but canada has a pretty good sized population decrease too yeah but not like the u.s so what if the powers that be said um well we can't have this we just can't have this and so whether they were remote viewing or or you know time traveling or you know mandela affecting or, or looking in the black box or whatever they were doing and they decided that and, and then they backtracked it and said here's where here's the point on the timeline that we have to change this here's the nexus point where we you know we have this has to happen so that these things do not happen and so we go into a new timeline so that this the these don't line up because they don't because <laughs> the powers that be don't want it and so they're they we're gonna we're gonna introduce this deadly coronavirus in china and you know get it out of the bioweapons lab or whatever and yeah it might spread around the world but it's it's gonna hit hardest the country that it originated from you know what i mean yeah yeah what do you think? That's my theory. Yeah. Well, yes. I, uh, I mean, you know, he doesn't take into account all the factors that we take into account. You know, right. Uh, yeah, right. This is <laughs> normal devolution. But in terms of what you've just said, um, you know, because I've I've thought, uh, you know, there are, there are various sort of possibilities. I mean, this is all speculation. Right. But one thing is, is if if there's a major kind of, uh, you know, kind of culling in, in China, you know, if, it, if it's really as damaging as we, what we think it is, and then they're able to somehow, the, the numbers are such in the West that they're able to control it. They've probably got a vaccine ready. Uh, and if it just turns out to be kind of a bit of a non, uh, you know, a non-event, in the West, but not in China, I take that as an indication that um, you know some form of uh, you know warfare uh, is, is is a given. Right, that it would be targeting the DNA of the Asians. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I, I, and they can I, I mean, do I can't that. say I can't say that for now. I can just throw out all these possibilities. Right. But if, and, but in that eventuality. Uh, that would convince me, you know, that they've used some sort of bioweapon against the Chinese. Yeah, and the Asians around the world would be would be coming down with it. it you know, that would it would ju wouldn't just be China. It would be that Asian DNA yeah, yeah, yeah. around the world. You know, China, China but, would be their major their right, major target. China would be where it originated, right? And of course, that would be their first target. Uh, just according to Agenda 21, you know, right. let alone sort of geopolitical right. consideration. And you so, know, you know yeah. about all these empty cities that they've already built in China. Yes, I do. I, do. I don't know yeah. why they don't go ahead and start moving the people in there into one those empty cities, and they've already got it, the infrastructure, and, and you know, they could easily. Yeah you know, make something into a hospital and move them all out there instead of quarantining a whole, you know, all the cities. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's well. I mean, it's yeah, so once they've got to quarantining, I mean, they've they've got to quarantine. They've got to wait till the pandemic or epidemic is over before they can start moving into. They've got to let it you know, cycle it, through. <clears throat> yeah, and it's yeah. several weeks so got, with they, that cycle. They've got to tell the people who are sick, you know. <laughs> right, right. They got to let all them die or kill themselves or whatever yeah. they're going to do. But you know. So the only two awful. other two. Uh, possibilities that I see from just the kind of cursory look is well first that the um, you know this may have been caused by a, a rat or a snake or a whatever eating bats yeah I would, uh, and then the second one is that there's uh, that the uh, laboratory in Wuhan and apparently there are two or three of them right. uh, were involved in uh, bioweapons research and right. either either you know something has escaped from the laboratory or has been allowed to escape and not right. probably by the Chinese authorities I doubt if they would do it to themselves right. but the, you know, the, uh, someone might have someone inside these laboratories who's quite right. willing to it could have been them. espionage you know yeah it, it, yes 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 a absolutely so those are so those are the two main possibilities that are sort of running around in my head. You know, there's, yeah. there's a sabotage, something out of that laboratory in mm -hmm. Wuhan, um, and or and or you know, kind of uh, bio warfare coming from yeah. from the west. Yeah, but this is I I'm just flipping out. I'm I'm literally I didn't sleep night before last, and then I had bad dreams, and yeah, and yeah. I did sleep last night but i'm still worn down and uh you know I'm, I'm just i'm picking up on all the emotions and the pains and everything and i'm barely dragging myself around here and and you know i don't even live over there but yeah you know um it's i'm it's so sad it's just so sad yeah. to oh, see it's this happen it's, it's really sad i just feel endless compassion for the chinese people mm -hmm. you know, they're going and, through this. and the suffering the suffering and the the pain and the agony and this has the satanic hand all over it and this is this is the hand of satan you know in my mind because you know satan will will cause the greatest amount of suffering possible and um it's it's just awful and the people who are not sick you know they're they're trapped in their homes and stuff and they're running out of food and who's to say the water, the water supply you know could get infected and everything and what we have to say we have to uh, include 5G in this equation too, because right, of, of right, the that article you sent me, they, yeah, they, they, they've got it. You know, they've they've un, you know, they've introduced 5G. They've got it. Yeah, in that article you sent me, it said that by the end of October of last year, they they were going to have 10,000 of these 5G. Um, what are what do you call them? 5G antennas. Uh, 5G. Yeah, yeah mass uh in wuhan ten thousand yes. ten thousand of those bases and you know everybody has their cell phone and you know they've been pushing five they've got their own 5g over there it's kind of separate yep. from the 5g that they're introducing over here and um i don't think it's that much different but have you ever seen the movie control factor no, no, I, I've seen very few of those sort of movies. and uh, You need to watch I, I, that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not normally drawn to them, you know. <laughs> it's enough dealing with reality. No, you need to, this is, this is a long, this is equivalent to the arrival, you know, and, and yeah. you had such, a, such an awakening after you saw the arrival, and I'd recommended that one. The control factor um, it, it, this would this fits right in. It's all about um, controlling people through the um, cell phones and wireless technology and mind control. And they could actually in the movie, and it was made. I can't remember when it was made, um, but it, it's it's an old movie. And mm. in in the movie, they could um, 
target an individual and actually send the the um, the frequency of a specific disease through you know and and target the individual and hit them and they come down with it or they could hit them with the frequency of, you know of a heart attack and they would die mm-hmm. or they could send them the frequency of cancer and they would get cancer and it was all through the frequencies of the cell phone towers well we know that through rife don't we yep yeah the right yeah, yeah. i have know, a i, I use uh, i have a rife machine yeah i've used it a yeah. lot yeah but anyway i i just wanted to uh something occurred to me uh uh, one of the uh, um, the videos that Hal Turner put up was really, really interesting. It was this guy, he was just standing in the street, and then he just keeled over and he fell on his face. face he was first. just absolutely... I saw that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, and now that doesn't happen in nature. No. You know, when no. people die, you know, their knees that's, buckle or, or, or a- something. Yeah, that's like a, what? what is it, a complete collapse from the inside out instantly? Yeah, well, it's, I think it's, a, it's like a, perhaps a direct and rapid attack on the central nervous system. Right. So that doesn't look much like a flu virus, a flu. Right, uh, yeah, and unless uh, they did an autopsy on the body to see if he had the infection, you know, we wouldn't know. Well, they won't be doing that. They're sending them straight no, to the morgue. they're just mall. hauling them off. They're just hauling yeah, them yeah. off, or they're probably burning them, so that there's no evidence. And I've just, and I've just confirmed something. He 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 showed the sign in Chinese, and I put it up on Facebook. And someone came up with a translation, and indeed, it's it's telling all the doctors and people not to speak to anybody. You know that there's right. a um, you know, complete sort of shutdown and right. Yeah. So. These are just my yeah. thoughts on it, and well, that's 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 really interesting, Marga. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's, I I like to bring bring other pieces of the puzzle in, and you know, think about other possibilities and other reasons that this is happening, because it it just doesn't make sense to me that you know whatever. Yeah. It's, it's all it's all satanic in my mind, but you know I'm just kind of sitting here watching it all play out, and I say the sooner everything ends, the better. But you know, <laughs> I wonder how old these figures are. You know, I mean, I mean, his notes are you know five or six years old, but they the figures presumably are up to date. Um, these are twenty twenty seventeen. Yeah, says, right, okay. okay, 2017 is here. Yeah, that's his projection, isn't it? Yes. But that's, you know, it's three years old now. Now we're into 2020. Yeah, yeah. And then the projection, I don't know if he updated. The, I don't know if the uh, if the projection is updated or, or if it's projection from the 2017 data. Um, I, I mean, it would be good if we would know that this website would was updated and um yeah it's copyright 2003 to 2020 so the copyright you know someone updated that to put 2020 in there so but um you know i don't know and i don't know how to contact him yeah oh well (laughs) so in the meantime it's highly alarming. I mean, yeah. So in 2017, 209 countries, and 2025, 183 countries. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Over okay. 20 countries are gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is kind of. You know, I wonder which ones they are. If I don't know, I mean, you kind of have to go through and yeah, yeah, call them out. It might be African. Someone countries. somewhere listed them one time, and I can't remember what they are. Yeah, yeah. But you know, he does. He doesn't bring in abrupt climate change or the El Nino or the methane bomb or you know, 
um, near-term human extinction or the melting sea ice. I mean, yeah. there are so many other factors. Yeah, oh, I mean. And yeah, all he says is, oh, the U.S. is going to lose people and, you know, they're going to have a collapse. Well, if the U.S. has an economic collapse, everybody else is going to have an economic collapse because yeah, 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 yeah. we're all in, in in, interdependent. Yeah. In the end, I I, we are all interdependent, and if the U.S. goes down, a lot of people are going down, you know, and that's just the way it is. And, you know, by China having this this issue, this horrible thing going on, how is that going to affect the trade and, you know, the products that we import? I mean, they... And products that they everything. export, it's going to affect everything, isn't it? I, I, it? It'll affect the world just as much as anything that happens in the United States. I mean, it, you know, we're so interconnected. I mean, you know, China, uh, uh, Australia and New Zealand are totally dependent on the... on the and, um, Yeah, and y'all are on, a lot closer... On China for, for our closer economy. Closer mile-wise yeah. to them than we are, but... You know, you look on everything you buy, practically it says made in China. Everything yeah. you buy is made in China. Yeah, you just suddenly find you can't clothe yourself or you can't I buy mean, a buyer. 99% you know. of everything is made in China, it seems like. Uh, yeah. So this yeah. is this is going to be devastating. So. And it's actual. It's actual. It's real. You know, it's real life. I mean, even, even if you forget you know, our analysis of how it is, even if you go by what the media is saying, uh, you know, it's going to have a devastating effect on the Chinese I know. and the world. I know. And just the, the emotional damage and the grief and the psychological and, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the kids. Well, it's, who, on top of, it's on top of everything else, you know. I mean, oh, you know it's it's going to put a I lot mean, of I've people been over Living through edge. three things. I thought there was going to be world war break out just a few weeks ago, and then there were the fires in Australia, and, I know, and now this, I know, you know, I know. and then there's everything else that's going, going on, because nothing ever, ever goes away. You know, they go out of the headlines, but they never go away. Right. 